Shortly after I got my license, there were some traffic law changes that came into effect. Now these little tweaks and stuff happen on a regular basis, but one of the changes that came was a fairly significant one and it had to do with turning on a red light. Now if you're on a, a one-way street or a two-way street, you come to a red light, you stop, there's no traffic coming, you can always turn right right um, that's that's always okay but the new thing that came was when you're on a one-way street and you're in the left hand lane you could turn left onto another one-way street at a red light okay so um, this is something that's that's allowed and often when it is allowed there's still even signs up at intersections because this is something that's a little bit counterintuitive we're used to if you're in the left hand lane you can't turn left because that's just gonna be all sorts of craziness and so I, I can remember pulling up to intersections and having to think, okay, I know what's true. I know what my driver instructor said and what I learned in the book and all that sort of stuff that you never turn left on a red light, but here's a sign that says I can. And there's that little bit of wrestling that happens in your heart, right? As, as you compare, okay, I know what I know is true. And now here's this new thing and you got to try and make sense of it. Um, and maybe you've been through something like that before. As we continue on our little mini series in Habakkuk here, we see Habakkuk wrestling because he knows certain things are true about who God is, but now he's just heard this message from God that God will use the Babylonians to come and to discipline his people. And as he considers who he knows God to be and who he knows the Chaldeans to be or the Babylonians to be, um, it, it leaves Habakkuk with more questions than answers at this point. Because as he considers the fact that God would use such a wicked nation to come in and to punish his own people, um, it, it leaves Habakkuk with, with some serious things to wrestle through. As you look at Habakkuk's second complaint, which goes from Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 12 through to uh, chapter 2 verse 1, that whole section there, um, a number of verses, we see Habakkuk wrestling with this and it's interesting to watch. He starts by acknowledging some things that he knows are true about God, that he's holy, that he's just. He knows that God's people won't ever be wiped off the map. He knows these things are true. Um, he knows that God is eternal. He knows that he can't stand evil. And he lists off all these attributes, all these things that he knows are true about who God is. That's on one hand. And then he starts to consider what God has told him about the people that are going to be used to discipline um, the people of Judah, the Jewish people, God's own people. They're the Chaldeans and they're vicious and they're violent. And they're, you know, they're this this force that is sweeping across the known world right now at this point. And, and Habakkuk knows that if the Babylonians come, Judah will not survive. They, they can't survive against this wave of power that's coming. And so it's, it's interesting as you read through these verses, you, you see Habakkuk just straining to figure this out. Okay, I know this is true about who God is. I know that as God's chosen people, we won't be wiped out. And yet here's this people coming that God has said that he's going to use and all they do is wipe people out. And so he's just trying to make sense of this. They're so wicked. They're, they're such a wicked and violent people. They don't even know who God is. And yet God is going to use them to punish us, his people who know who God is. And it's just interesting to watch Habakkuk's mind just trying to figure this out because this does not make sense to him. This doesn't jive with who he knows God to be. And yet God himself is the one who said that this is going to happen. So he knows it's true. And there's just a wrestling match happening in Habakkuk's mind before. Maybe you've faced something like that before in your walk with God, where, where you know certain things are true about who God is, right? Maybe that he's just, maybe that he's holy, maybe that he's loving, maybe that as a believer, you, you know that God um, uses things for your good. And then something comes into your life that just doesn't make sense. How could this possibly be a part of God's plan for my life? How could this pain or this loss or this, this illness or this struggle or this tension I have with this person, whatever the case might be, this diagnosis, how could this possibly be part of God's good for my life? How could this be a part of God's plan for me as his child? And it just forces us to think and to wrestle. Um, my encouragement to you comes out of Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1. After he's wrestled with this, after Habakkuk is laid out, here's what I know is true about God. Here's what God has said he's going to do. This doesn't make sense. He's gone through all this sort of stuff. We get to Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1 and we see faith coming through. 
Because what does Habakkuk do? He doesn't storm off and say, well, if this is how God is going to act, forget this. I don't need this aggravation. I'm going to go off and do my own thing if God's just going to abandon us. No, that's not what Habakkuk does. Habakkuk says that he will wait. He said, I'm going to go to my post. I'm going to get up on my watchtower and I'm going to wait and see how God answers this. I'm going to trust God in this. Yes, I have questions, and I hope God answers those questions. As, as we will see as we get into Habakkuk chapter 2, God does indeed answer those questions, but it's the faith that Habakkuk shows here. He doesn't give up. He's got questions. He's got doubts. There's things that don't make sense to him. Maybe there's a little bit of uh, frustration or, or anger or, or something coming through because, you know, Habakkuk doesn't just take this lying down. He wants to wrestle with these questions, but he ends with that confident faith that God will answer, that he'll respond. And so he has questions about how God is acting, but it doesn't drive him away from God. If anything, it drives him to God. And that's my encouragement for you here from this Tuesday morning devotional this week. When you're in one of those times in life when something comes that you weren't expecting that just makes you question a lot of things about who God is or what you know is true about God and it, it sort of um, runs up against that and you're not sure what to do with it. It's okay to wrestle with it. It's okay to think. It's okay to consider, okay, this is who I know who God is. This is my situation. How do I jive these things? It's good to wrestle through those things. But in the end, we need to end, as Habakkuk does, staying in that faith and understanding that God will answer, maybe not explain everything, maybe not give us all the details of why this is happening, but that God is still in control and he's still one to look to in faith, even when life just doesn't make a lot of sense. As we continue next week, we're going to see God's answer come. We're going to see him explain to Habakkuk that even though Babylon is going to come, and even though they're going to do a lot of harm to Judah, God has a plan to deal with them. There's going to be some hope, and the, the book is going to start to take a turn for the better in that way. But for today, um, as you consider your own life and as you face things that maybe make you wrestle with what you know is true about God, here's these circumstances. How do I make them go together? Follow Habakkuk's example and end continuing in your faith, knowing that God has a plan, that God will continue to work that out and trust that he will in time. Maybe it's on the other side of eternity to show you how this is all going to make sense and why he's doing that. I hope you have a good week this week. We look forward to seeing you again soon. And thanks for joining us this morning.